This is the Curriculum Vita. Welcome. All right, yo, Ryan O, behavior analyst, creator, and all things behavior analysis is what you're gonna find on this channel. We like to nerd on psychology here, and today a quick video on what a CV or Curriculum Vita is, and a template that I made to share for anyone that's looking for one. So, I've been working on a series with professors at St. Cloud University. Their ABA program recently launched a new PsyD program in behavior analysis. During one of the discussions, I realized that one of the things that my mentor helped me with was understanding what a CV is and provided me with a template to start and some guidance. So I wanted to share that or as much as I could with you today. So first of all, what is a CV? A curriculum vitae, vita, is Latin for course of life, often shortened as a CV or a vita. It's a written overview of someone's life work and vitae could be plural or possessive. I, to this date, I still don't know if it's vitae or vita. I don't understand this. CV, C CV is what I've, I've been told it is. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna keep calling it. So a CV showcases the long form of your professional life, the education that you've completed, the certifications, your research involvement, affiliations, and more. And I'm gonna show sections of mine in a bit, but first, real quick, the distinction with a resume. A resume is a short form, typically one page, uh, one pager with work history, accomplish accomplishments, skills, and oftentimes used for job applications, whereas the CV is used for academic and scientific or medical related jobs. With behavior analysis being situated in a science-based field, a scientific field, scientific study behavior, right? That's where these come along. So there's a lot more that you can read on these if you want, but really that's the gist. A resume is showing what you're competent in and it's a short one page whereas the cv shows credentials and experience in a much more detailed form mine personally is up to 20 pages already so let's actually explore those really quickly all right so i'm on my website i have both the resume and the cv set up for the resume i violate a big thing that people do not suggest um, to do which is i put a picture of myself and i take up a ton of space with that that being said um, I am specifically interested in showing off like creative abilities and skills that I have for videography. And that is a practice that's used oftentimes in those is like creative ways to kind of throw that in there. So this is not specific to most resumes, but for this is just a quick about me section, my experience, both as a behavior analyst, as well as uh, what I call director of photography. That's a term that's used for people that are in charge of creating imagery, um, such as videos. And then I talk about my specifics there, freelance videographer, that I do this in different behavioral mental health areas. Um, and then the digital nomad piece is uh, thrown in there to talk about how I create online content the reach of that sort of content and such. Um, and then different achievements that I think are worthwhile for the projects I'm trying to reach, which is essentially creating online behavioral mental health content and making the world aware of like how behavioral science can help make the world a better place. So this is very niche and specific. I've used this to pitch to different creative jobs that I've actually landed. Some I haven't landed as well. I've never had specific feedback about this, but that's just like my quick resume. You know, it is just boom to the point. Now, the curriculum vita, again, I violate the same thing where I have a um, uh, image of myself at the top. Uh, my, I would say my personal brand, uh, if you call it that, is um, is me. So like I like to have my face with the name, essentially. Um, so for this one, educational history is at top. I was taught that that is always there and you keep that up there. So my educational, um, educational history is up top and I went in reverse order. So like I took a class in high school that's at the bottom and then in my undergraduate experience, both my degree obtained as well as my minor and then my degree thesis when it came to uh, Florida Institute of Technology, my graduate training um, and an accolade that I had there as well for outstanding, outstanding graduate student of the year that I obtained too. So. Um, this is like, boom, here's my educational history. Again, typically this image is not gonna be there. It's not gonna be in my template. Um, and you do not include those. Um, specifically, I have different things in here, such as the Daily BA, ChatCon, Behavior Academy, on location. These are things that I've built. So I want people to find those now. That's not typically included like this, um, but I want people to potentially find easily the things that I do make out there. Now, um, things, that are also included. So next is the relevant certification section, my board certified behavior analyst credential, as well as the fact that I can provide continuing education, what those are under. I've got two different LLCs that provide them for different organizational things that we do. Um, the online brands is not uh, something that I've seen elsewhere per se, but I needed a way to represent the things that I'm doing online. 
And so I created this specifically and I added these because the, these are the things that I'm working on actively um, right now. So boom, those are listed. If we scroll down a little bit more, um, it's, it's things that I used to work on. It's like why we do what we do as a podcast. It's still active. But you note here that I start to list um, that I'm no longer active as you go down further in my list. So it's a chronological order based on what I'm currently still working on. Older projects are towards the bottom. Now, relevant clinical experience um, are the things that I did in the field for behavior analysis. So I co-founder and director of On Location, my adjunct professorship that I work as uh, for Capella University, um, did my own business here, but then you'll start scrolling down. You can see like at one point um, I did, this is actually offset, I need to fix this. Should be on the next page. Uh, data strategist for understanding behavioral data for a basketball team. I did that at one point um, for a quick little stint and period of time. So again, these are reverse chronological. For these, I was taught that what you do is you list out your role, the, who the company is, and a potential address or location. I don't disclose all of that all the time um, based on if it's a, a you know, um, like this is based in my house, so you're not gonna get that location specifically. Um, but then your duties. So the duties, I was coached to include just as much as you can to convey the point. It should be no more than a few sentences. So I've done that for each of these. You can see here, um, that have done the same thing, my position, the location, uh, the dates, and the duties for all of these. So founder of Institute of Meaningful Instruction, uh, behavior analyst, learning systems development specialist at ICR Industry, Industries, uh, worked at Chartlytics at one point for a little bit. Just kind of keep these going. And this is every role that I have had in the field of behavior analysis all the way down to the first one. This takes up a good, what, four pages or so. At what point then it turns into college teaching experience. So this is a different section that people include um, based on if you've had experience in this sort of area. So again, I didn't have all of this. When I first started, I had a page or two and that was it. Page two, three, maybe max that I filled up on my CV. As you do more things, you know, 10 years into the field, you start to add to these sort of things. So at one point I was a teaching assistant for two graduate level courses, so I listed that. But then at one point I did some independent contractor work, teaching people how to get ready for the BCPA exam. So I included that since I was kind of college related. And now in my professorship, I added that. Uh, sorry, adjunct professor role is what I'd like to put there. Not a full-time professor um, by any means. And much respect to anybody that does do that sort of thing because this is far different. I teach a course. <laughs> um, so I add those. And then research experience. So if you don't have research experience, try to figure out how you can get that research experience. For me, um, I had a number of different opportunities. If we scroll down to the bottom, you can see that I started working with uh, Eric Dubuque at the Behavior Analysis Program in Reno, Nevada, as well as Melissa Nosick. We worked on a few different things, particularly posters that we presented at conferences that I'll get to. Um, and then I worked for a couple years in a research lab, operant lab um, for the JKP Aquatic Operant Lab, which is pretty fun. Um, so again, that's described. You can look at those if you want specifics and how I word those sort of things. Um, professional committee membership. So this is a section specifically for when um, you are a part of creating some sort of uh, content or role or thing for the communities. These are volunteer roles almost all the time. Um, both of these, the Cambridge Center one, as well as the program committee for ABI was a complete volunteer role outside of, I believe, ABI um, waived our, our fees for the time that we had put in for the conference that we were helping organize. Um, and they gave us like a nice little thank you, right? But these are like, I'm not paid for these, but there may be some perks as a result of being a part of them. Um, and that one was designing, help designing the conference, doing some grunt work on the back end for those um, and those sort of roles. So. Um, now I had maintained, um, I need to see if I'm still current on these, but different places that you are a member of professional associations can help show people what you are, how active you are in the community and continuing to learn at certain things. Um, and so when it comes to honor society of, uh, Pi Kappa Phi, Standard Acceleration Society, OBM Network, like there was different things that I was a member of. Um, I need to actually check on these because these lapse. So I try to re repay every year and become a member there to support my local chapters, but also be involved and learn more and things like that. Um, rele relevant volunteer work. So these are things that I've done at different points for um, different organizations in the field. 
uh, whereas volunteer. Of course, people like to see volunteer opportunities. My first one was the Nevada Association of Behavior Analysis Volunteer for their annual conference. This was a one day thing, but some of these are a little bit larger. Um, when it came to like the guest reviewer for BAP, I got to do something there where I got to guest review um, a article that was being published um, and kind of things in between. Uh, recently got to add a book chapter. So this is an area that I had never had anything on. I just recently got to add. Um, and the book chapter is uh, pretty cool. It's not out yet. So when it's not out, you can say it's accepted for publication, um, but it will be out on a certain date. I can actually update this now that we know the date we think. Um, so these are things that you're continually coming back to, right? Um, conferences hosted, uh, since I got into the, the, the partnership game of hosting my own conferences, I made a section here just to show that I, I've got some experience on how to put together physical and online events um, related to professional development in the field. And then um, there is a slew of different things when it comes to poster presentations, presentations, and most people will dis, uh, make a distinction between, excuse me, um, invited presentations and workshops versus just ones that you'd submitted. So in the field, any scientific field, you can submit to present, go to a conference, present your work. When it comes to uh, behavior analysis, this is no different. I've done a whole ton of these. It's actually I gained a lot of the knowledge that I share on the channel now. Um, and I list the most, in, I would say the quote, most important ones, which are the invited ones up front first. Um, so these are invited presentations. You list these just like you would in APA format, uh, more or less with uh, who was involved, the title, the location, etc. So there's a standard format for these. So invited presentations is a section. This is actually a part that I'm pretty, um, I remember my first one that I listed here in 2013 with Julio. Um, and it was, uh, these are, this is a cool, cool section because you can tell that people are interested when you start to get these invited things. And it took me five or six years of presenting regularly to start to even be um, potentially looked at for an invited presentation. These are an honor. Uh, workshops or have their own section. Uh, presentations have another section that are not invited. So you can see here, each of these are individual presentations that were completed at somewhere at Behavior Analytic Conference for the most part. Some of them are non-Behavior Analytic. Um, so scroll down and then posters, formal poster presentations. I haven't done these for a number of years. It's been about to, since uh, 2017, since I've been involved in one. Um, but there's a good, I don't know, 50 posters here. So this is, we used to present a ton of these. Um, and you just list each one. The cool thing about a CV that I didn't get into is if you find somebody's online, which is why I host mine online is actually for this reason, is when you're searching around, uh, Google can like crawl and find these sort of things for people that are looking for things. So like if you're looking for something that I've done in the past, potentially um, or coincidentally, just off of a keyword, it might point you to this and it might help spread your work. Um, so mine being hosted online, people might be searching for something like uh, reverse chaining procedures in clinical practice. Uh, maybe they look up reverse chaining procedures. They might find um, this document and then reach out saying, hey, I found this, I saw your contact information. Can I have the poster? Uh, can, what did you learn from it? Something like that, right? Um, down a little bit lower are awards. This is actually the very end. Different awards that have been received. Um, and again, I just listed these based on anywhere from my scholarships that I had received um, all the way up until um, some more recent ones when it comes to things that I've done in the community behavior analysis. So that is the basics of my CV. There's different sections. Like if you were, uh, like I said, uh, like I'll get into, like if you're getting into tenured positions and really moving up academia, that's very different. But if you're looking for just a template that helps you get the basics that you can apply to graduate school or something like that, or apply for academic positions, the template should get you started. Um, and these things build slowly over time. Uh, basically added roughly a page or so per year, um, sometimes two, depending on how active I was and what I was doing. Um, and the length is nothing more than I've produced a lot of stuff. It doesn't indicate quality. And that is where the details of what you write on here, people will be looking for that quality through um, the different headers and sections and what you've produced. Okay. Um, so hope that helps. Let's go uh, back over there. So some things to remember, this is but one template. It's been useful for me and met my needs in the area of psychology. 
that I am within, that is behavior analysis. That said, the order of sections can change. In fact, I've changed mine a bit over time and I've been told that this can matter a lot for various positions in academia. So people kind of move things around based on what it is that they're signing up for or trying to obtain in life. So if that is you, then it's best to talk to someone within the position you are going for um, or something very similar. This is just a starting point and but one example. So that's about it. The full series with St. Cloud is actually up. Uh, we've just finished releasing at least everything that's been recorded to date. You can check out topics like uh, how to handle references and letters of recommendation, how to handle weak areas on your application, ways to think about relocation and backup plans if things don't go your way and you don't get in, myths of the PsyD and PhD in behavior analysis, and much more at the link down below. And on that note, this video is brought to you by people like you, patrons, people that support my efforts financially. For three years now, I've actually spent a lot of time and lost money, actually lost money, creating these videos because, well, I think they're important, the field's important, and they're important people like you doing important things that, well, people need to hear by people like you. So if this is something you're for, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is uh, down below at the top. I hope you learned something. Like, share, subscribe. It actually makes a difference. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for considering supporting. And that's your daily BA.